Cutting soil into my raised bed mixture. I do this because I love to intermix flowering annuals and annuals compared to vegetables need an even better well-drained soil than vegetables. Vegetables can tolerate a soil that holds more moisture whereas flowering annuals need that water to drain out a lot quicker so they don't get rut rot and end up being over watered. Now I go through and I even out that potting soil throughout the entire bed. There is no better tool than your hands. The next thing I'm adding is what I add every single year, and that is my worm castings. All I do with worm castings is lightly shake a very thin layer of it over top of the potting soil. After that, then I'm gonna add my topsoil up to the top, and then we're gonna go ahead and till it in with my little raised bed tiller. Anytime I can get help, I sure take it. Good job, Lana. Good job, Selah. What are you doing there, Lana? Um, planting for mommy. Oh. Selah, what you doing there? And um, I'm pulling in reinforcements. What are you doing? I'm, I'm trying to get you, you on my video. You <laughs> no, I'm getting you on mine. I'm doing my video. Look at it. We're Come doing on now. videos here. Come on now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Alright, so I'm, I'm getting extra help so that way I can get some planting done today. Jason's got an overnight bachelor party, so he owes me. He's got to he's got to fill these beds in order to in order to uh, be able to go out tonight. Will I be able to make it in time? No way. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be so tired after one drink. He's gonna be such a dud. I'll be sleeping by 8:30. <laughs> As you can see here, my onions are doing pretty good. I went ahead and I just tossed some worm castings over the top. That's all you have to do. And then all I'm gonna do is just work in between the onions because that's just pretty much keeping it tilled a little bit. This helps aerate the soil and those worm castings also help aerate the soil. So as you're working around those onions, down the rows of the onions, you're also working in those worm castings in that soil. And that works as not only an aerator in your soil, but also works as a soil conditioner and an all, all organic natural fertilizer as well. And what's really cool about the worm castings is that there is no scent. We love to hang out and eat in our garden here all summer long. The last thing I want to smell is manure. And there we go. My onions are tilled, fertilized, aerated, and now they're ready to grow and be awesome onions. This isn't the only time I'm gonna be doing this with these guys. You have to continue hoeing in between really nice. That keeps the weeds down and it just helps promote a better overall plant and bounty. Right here, I left a little space open so that way I can go ahead and add something that's nice and flowering right here. Wherever I plant flowers, I just pretty much treat it as a container garden, just like I do all of my other containers. So because this area here is gonna be planted with annuals, I am going to plant it up like a regular container garden. So it's only gonna be seen from this side. You'll be seeing it all over, but really you're gonna be seeing it from the front. So I'm actually gonna take some of this purple basil. It smells fantastic. Mm, 
and as the wind blows, you can smell it through the air in the garden oasis. So I'm gonna put one on this corner and one over on this corner and they end up getting little white flowers on them once they start seeding out, which is so beautiful. So you got the dark leaf, the white flower, and then I'm gonna brighten it up with this campfire. It's the new Campfire Fireburst Biden, and that'll be that pretty orange, and it has like some yellow in the center. It just, it looks like a campfire, literally. So I'm gonna put that there. So that kind of goes upright and trailing over. These are seeded by my dad, Farmer Wayne, from Wayne Sauter's Greenhouses. These are the Dragon Breath Celosias, and these get really nice and big with that beautiful red plume. So we're gonna put those right here and right here. Of course, Jason's ruining my video. You can't cancel out that noise. But either way, these beds have gotta get filled, so totally fine with it don't run over my plants see that's why we like to make it a lot wider in between these areas so that we can just pull in and get the work done with the ranger today is the day that I take out my box of seeds and I go through them once again and I actually never start with a plan so any varieties that trail such as watermelons or cucumbers um, anything that needs to be trellised you can trellis it, but out here we get so many bad winds because we're in the wide open. We don't have it blocked off with trees yet. So what I actually do is I directly sow my seeds for cucumbers, watermelons, cantaloupes, all that stuff. Um, I sow them on the ends of the raised beds. So right where you just saw me add all of those flowering annuals right there, on some of the edges I add those flowering areas but on most of the ends, I actually grow those things that need to be trellised because then that way they can just grow over the side of the raised bed and it can serve space just as well because it just flows over it just like something trailing in a container. That's how I work my raised beds, you guys. It's just like a flowering container. So vegetables or anything that needs to be trellised that can also trail onto the ground, I put on the edges so that way it can trail over my raised beds, just like a planter, just like a trailing petunia or a trailing iboza vine or a trailing whatever you want. But that's how I do it. And then from then on, I do upright and then the trailers always tend to go on the sides. After I have my flowering annuals there, then I have varieties of edibles. So I have some of my onions right here, which are my white onions. And then here I did um, a lettuce. So we'll see what happens there. It's starting to pop up. As you can tell, I already tilled these as well with some worm castings. So now before I move on to another variety of vegetables of something else, I actually come in between and split it with flowering annuals. So anytime I start a new vegetable, it gets split by a flowering annual. Jason must really want to go to this bachelor party. <laughs> so this is where I'm going to be planting my broccoli and my cauliflower. So I'm going to do some broccoli on that side, some cauliflower on this side, and in the middle, I'm going to be placing some of this millet grass. The birds love this grass. As soon as it seeds out, it's like there's finches all over it. Even the hummingbirds come over and they sit. And they all just kind of have like this little like bird party in the morning. We sit by the windows and we watch all the birds come in to land on these millet grasses. It's just beautiful. So I'm just gonna place them in between my two rows. So broccoli, a couple millet grasses, and then cauliflower. All right, so now I've got my cauliflower and my broccoli planted. I did a foot in between. Usually it's up to 18 inches in between in the ground, but in raised beds, you have to conserve the space a little bit more. So I grow everything just a little bit tighter. So I did the millet grass in between. I did three, but then in between those millet grass, I did some snapdragons just for that extra little bit of color. The hummingbirds just love the sweetness of those snapdragons. And these are the taller varieties as well. So now as you can see, I brought this snapdragon almost to the end. Cause what I'm going to do now is I am going to seed 
I'm trying out for the first time a new kind of cucumber. It's called Mexican Sour Gherkin. I don't know if I'm going to love it, but we're going to try it anyway. With these, you have to trellis them. But like I've told you already before, I'm not going to trellis anything that needs to get trellis. I usually grow along the edges so they just trail over. Things grow super well like that. I grow my melons like that in my raised beds all the time. I did my cucumbers like that last year in the raised beds and they turned out beautifully. What I'm going to do is seed one here, seed one here, and seed one over here. So in a U shape. So that way they can trail in the front of the box, on the side of the box, and on the other side of the box. That's how these ones are going to have to grow this year. We'll try them out and I'll let you know how they taste. As you can see, I just did little shallow areas where I'm gonna drop around four seeds in there. So I'm able to get four areas. It says to keep them about a foot apart. We're just gonna go like this and just kind of cover them a little bit. We do not pat down on it. You want it to stay nice and loose on top so it's easy for that um, plant to kind of push through the top of the soil. So we just go through and lightly cover and there we go and we just wait it out. And that is how I plant my raised beds. So now I've got four more raised beds to go. Now that we've got all the soil and worm castings that we need in the raised beds, now it's time to use my little tiller and till it all in so it's blended perfectly for the start of the growing season. to go and then I'm going to head straight to just planting all day long. <laughs> 